This is Spiritual Civilization, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about character assassination. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spiritual Civilization, where we meet together as brethren to break down the word and also share truths that are very, very pertinent for you to understand in this day and age. Uh, I am joined by a very illustrious gentleman. Uh, on my immediate left, we have Robinson Omol. He is the vice chair of One Desire. On my right, we have the Reverend Richard Mwendo, who is a pastor at Infinite Fellowship Ministries. Uh, on my extreme right, we have Mr. Leli Mandela. He is the chair of One Desire. And then, of course, my name is Pastor Evans Ocheng, and it is wonderful to have you join us and to tune in to spiritual civilization. I would like us to just begin with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today, O loving Father God, to thank you. Thank you for each and every person that is viewing this broadcast, my Father God. I pray that whatever we may discuss, my Father God, that it may be a blessing, it may be relevant, it may be applicable, Jehovah, my Father God, to each and every individual that will watch this broadcast, my God. I thank you and I bless your holy name. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. At this juncture, I would like to hand over to our host, and also our Father in the Lord, Bishop Gobanga J.O. Bishop, take it away. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to say how glad I am to be uh, together with this wonderful gentleman for another uh, broadcast on uh, spiritual civilization. Now, today we want to discuss a very pertinent uh, topic, character assassination. Um, what is character assassination and how does it uh, impact or affect the lives of people? Now, every one of us has in one way or the other gone through uh, moments whereby uh, your character was assassinated maybe by a close friend, a relative, an individual, a church member, uh, a schoolmate probably. And um, maybe at some point, uh, I don't know, but uh, you may also be very surprised that you and I may have uh, participated in assassinating the character of an individual either knowingly or unknowingly. But um, maybe the first thing that I need to uh, tell us viewers is that never in life should you allow yourself to be enlisted by an individual, be it a friend or an acquaintance. Do not allow yourself to be enlisted by an individual to hate someone who hasn't wronged you. Mm. Mm. Do not allow yourself to come to the point whereby you you take a rash decision because of what a friend of yours, a relative has said about another person. Because you know, the negative things that uh, you hear someone say about another person says a lot about that individual, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, you know, the negative things that you say about any person it speaks volumes about yourself. It speaks volumes about the kind of life you, 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 you are. And, um, you know, uh, one thing we must know is that the negative things that we keep peddling around uh, about other individuals, a time comes whereby somebody somewhere will also speak negative things about you. That's very fundamental. And you know, it is possible to tell an, uh, a lot about an individual by what he or she says about other people. Mm -hmm. You want to know more about someone? Just get to hear what they say about others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, most times you'll find that people who are assassinated the character of uh, a particular individual, it's because they are trying to mask 
some certain re- certain aspects, certain challenges they actually face in life. And you know, character assassination is very pervasive. It is pervasive and very, very destructive in the lives of people. We see character assassination in families. We see character assassination at the workplace. We see character assassination in organizations, even places of worship such as church. And, um, you know, uh, for someone to assassinate your character, what that means is that this person has made a deliberate and malicious uh, effort to damage the reputation of credibility of an individual. And you'll find that, uh, you know, some of these allegations that are made, when you look at them very carefully, in most instances, they are unjustified. When I say unjustified, it may not necessarily mean that uh, the facts are not uh, accurate. You may have factual information about what uh, the kind of life that someone is lead, is is living or leading. You may probably even um, uh, have insight into an individual's background. But the reality of the matter is that uh, the motivation behind uh, 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 you uh, making certain allegations that are factual about an individual is that you intend to damage his or her reputation. You intend to make that person less or not credible at all. And you know, friends, character assassination is basically slander. It is bad mouthing. You bad mouth someone with the, an intention of destroying the public confidence in that person. So you see, the thing is, you may actually be saying something that is true. But what qualifies it as character assassination is the intent. Mm -hmm. And that's why when we talk about character assassination, especially in this uh, particular broadcast, we need to analyze what the intention is. Of course, there are instances of character assassination which are very common whereby you begin to spread uh, information which is uh, untrue. Uh, you come up with um, an allegation of something that has not happened with an intent of destroying that person's credibility. But the, 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 the thing that we must also consider is that it is possible for you to say something which is factual. Mm. But now the thing is, you have a motive to destroy. It's like you've been looking for an opportunity. You're looking for an opportunity to bring somebody down. Mm. And then you find that now there are those people who choose to believe um, the account of a person without establishing the context. Because normally, you know, there are two sides of a story. Mm. I may come and tell you something about my brother or my sister, but the reality of the matter is that until you get to hear my brother's side of the story, until you get to hear my sister's side of the story, the reality of the matter is that what you have is either half truth or no truth. So I just want to open the floor and uh, so that we can we are able to discuss further. Yeah. I think if I may jump at that opportunity to to respond first, I'm just thinking deeply about character assassination and the fact that it does not occur within a vacuum that there are certain things that give it the power that it has to completely discredit um, an individual's social uh, status. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to realize that things like tonal tonal quality of communication, uh, context, um, uh, relationship, uh, ability to distinguish internal challenges from the actual fact of engagement are critical components that uh, help someone take a step back from the temptation to uh, get to that space of character assassination. And it's so, when you say everyone has done it, I believe that is actually the most sobering reality of character assassination. We have been either uh, the perpetrators or the accomplices or uh, a third party uh, multiplier <laughs> of of things that 
seem like they are true but actually have no truth in them they're factual based on which perspective you had and this is a very it's a very deep topic especially in the world we live in today it's a very deep topic to begin our conversation with and it has really started with a lot of meditation so thank you asko i think for me the 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 thing that just jumps into my mind when we're talking about character assassination is um how do we um when when speaking about somebody else what is our motive in how we want that person perceived at the end of the day um and it's it's a it's a line that has to be drawn where uh there's talking about someone and there's gossip or there's slander um and there are ways to there are different ways that we can look at we can begin to look at it i'm actually excited about this conversation because um i want to see those new ideas or those yeah those new ideas that will open up and uh, enable us to really learn and understand what it really means when when you give people a perception about someone that is based on your own factual interpretation of what has actually happened um rather than based on truth so there are certain uh th- there's a way that you view things that somebody else when they were to view it in that view it view the same scenario they would view it differently so that also comes up a lot of personal uh, perspective comes out when we're talking about character assassination yeah well you know um in a way character assassination has some sort of connection to gossip however You know character assassination has got one agenda. Mm-hmm. Character assassination is premeditated. Mm-hmm. Gossip may not necessarily be premeditated. Character assassination is whereby you deliberately determine intend to destroy somebody. Mm-hmm. So you're only looking for an opportunity. But you know for gossip gossip may just crop up even when you least expect probably you just want to have some idle talk in as much as we know that gossip is not good mm. but character assassination is almost as equivalent as murder because there is malice okay it there is there is actually um malice here because you know um it's like by the time i am thinking of assassinating your character mm-hmm. what i'm basically doing is that i am lowering my own character in order to ruin the character of another person mm-hmm. in other words a, a, a character assassination may present itself as false humility mm-hmm. i bring myself to the level and i put on the garment of false humility or self righteousness with an ulterior motive of destroying the character of uh, another individual and then the other thing you must know about character assassination is that um you know there are people who take delight in destroying other people mm. yeah they they they, they 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 take delight in just destroying other people they 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 they, they delight in ruining other people's reputation mm. for gossip it may not necessarily mean that you want to ruin somebody else but you, you you can imagine there are people who just delight in destroying the reputation of others a person who assassinates the character of another or a person who has, who, who has that culture of doing so because i think there are people who have got a phd in destroying other people's character they do so because they just want to destroy your reputation in order to appear more appealing or as a way of trying to endear themselves you know to you or to whoever that is actually their audience and what happens is is that they oil their ego you know in pulling other people down that's basically the thing yeah 
So, yeah, we, 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 we can still continue the conversation. Uh, I think, um, just to add on to what has been said, mm-hmm. character association is very deliberate, very focused. It has <laughs> somebody who uh, wants to uh, assassinate somebody's character and another person's character, they have to, you know, sit and plan and decide even who is the audience for the for the for the assassination. Uh, you know, I have to think and see. Um, I want to assassinate Richie's character. So, who who is the best audience? Uh, maybe Rob will not buy it, but maybe Evans will will buy it. So, there's a whole <laughs> there's a whole process towards even picking who. Uh, who, who is your audience at the end and uh, you know the more I think about it the more and you say everyone as a point has done it or has been an audience or a participant you know, it, uh, <laughs> for me it has, it has now brought in a lot of questions about myself and like how much have I uh, somebody has viewed me as an able audience to uh, enable the assassination of somebody's character um how much of uh, um d- how much of a person uh, or how much of even me as an audience how how does that speak about my character mm. Mm. and you know just to add on to something mm. you know you may have the facts about what someone has done or even what somebody has said you may have the facts but what makes it false is the ulterior motive. Yes. I've discovered in life that uh, when you have the tendency of using factual information about someone's background to destroy that individual, what happens is that you, you, your motive is what will disqualify it as truth. Because you see, motive or intentions so long as it is ulterior, so long as you delight in doing so, then what you're basically doing is that you're basically um, breathing or rather giving that factual information a foul breath. Mm-hmm. It is not a breath that comes from the purest of sources. Mm-hmm. And you know, the soul has a tendency of releasing very bad breath into the atmosphere that would make people perceive others badly. And the truth of the matter is this. Uh, Character assassination is normally fueled by false allegations. Okay? Mm -hmm. And like I said, um, the allegations do not necessarily have to be false because they are untrue. Yeah. The allegations may have some truth, but what makes it false is the breadth of ulterior motive, okay? And the reality of the matter is that, um, you know, people who have a tendency of um, engaging in the vice of character assassination, they suffer from mental and emotional abuse, okay? It's a form of actually mental abuse, you know? Whereby, if you know, if I can't kill your dreams, if I can't, if I cannot destroy your vision, I assassinate your character, mm. you know? That is mental abuse, beloved, you see? Um, and it's bad. Why? Because, <laughs> you know what happens is that um, your success kind of irritates me. Mm. It, it irritates my insecurities, my inadequacies. Mm. Each time I see you succeeding, even each time I see people giving you a standing ovation, each time when I see you just excelling in marriage and family, it mm-hmm. your success reminds me of my of my failures, yeah. of my inadequacies. Okay, and and, and 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 to the point whereby if hating you is not working, what I'll do is that I'll start telling people and spreading lies about you. You know, and uh, the truth of the matter is that um, that in and of itself. What, uh, by the time you get to know that the stuff that I have said about you, you'll be affected mentally, you'll also be affected emotionally, you know? And it's not very, very good. Yeah. yeah. Let's go on with the conversation. Um, that's really, really 
important to underscore bishop because i think one of the drivers of character assassination is actually the frequencies of the heart and the posture of the heart of man so if um if someone is insecure but they are fearful or they have envy towards another person that in itself can actually cause them to assassinate the character of someone and i think even in the the context of the body of christ it's something that we see every day where i notice your church is growing bishop and then now i i go on the pulpit or at, at a pulpit within the church that i perhaps am the senior pastor of and then i go and say that bishop came to my house and stole a morsel of bread yet in the real sense he actually did not do such a thing so it's 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 really driven by that that jealousy that envy that that fear and i think as you as you rightly told us bishop time and time again that um freedom is the ability to move within the confines of your native element so if a person is is not free in and of itself that in itself can cause them to end up character assassinating another individual yeah it's very very true um jealousy envy you know those are two cousins eh? mm-hmm. they are both vices but they are cousins and you find that one is more extreme than the other when you're jealous of someone's success then automatically you will be motivated to spread lies about that particular individual and uh, you know talking about church you just reminding me of some of the things that I've seen happening in church um i think i've been one person who has uh, been a victim of this even prior to being a pastor and even when becoming a pastor it is a, it's the one thing that um whether we like it or not we will have to see it uh and live with the reality that uh, there are, there will always be people who will always be envious of what you're doing and they'll try to capitalize on certain weak points of your life as an individual and you know for pastors i can tell you it is worse because um you know as a pastor you're at the helm of leadership and you're dealing with people you may have the best intentions you may do everything you can but you'll find that if not from within the ranks of leadership you might even experience it from some congregants like let's say for instance when you when as a pastor i commend a particular uh, congregant for doing well mm-hmm. in a particular area you'll find that an individual who has not been healed an individual who uh, has got certain uh, traumatic experiences uh, of his or her past and, and and by the way these are experiences that are not related even they, they have nothing to do with you as a pastor or the congregation what happens is that this individual will basically look for a way of accusing that pastor of bias you know and i'm sure you people you know what i mean no i've been accused of showing favoritism to some people and you know <laughs> i remember asking a colleague and one time if i was to give you the position to be, uh, the same same position that these other colleague and has would you be able to do the following things and i listed and she looked at me and told me oh my i think i've gotten it wrong because i told her you know when you see people hang around me just know very well there's there's a lot that is required if if you you cannot be at the position where i am because she had all, all along thought bishop you favor people you, you know she, it it came out in a very insidious way and i was able to capture it and i addressed it with finality thanks be to god she she snapped out of it and you're the best of friends <laughs> unfortunately i don't get opportunities to to talk to some of these people i only get to see it if it's not on social media and you know social media tells you a lot about how people have actually been looking at you how people have been looking at those that they perceive are your favorites even when there is no such a thing as a favorite and it tells you that these are people who have been traumatized by their upbringing these are people who when they were growing up they saw their siblings being rewarded and never got any reward or they expected to be the center of attention they wanted to be gods in the lives of their parents or goddesses mm-hmm. and when the parents try to sh- to distribute the love equally it became an issue so they end up growing to the point where now the only thing they can do for them to quote and quote survive is to be malicious 
you know, coming up with stories that are not true, or they'll hear something from a second party, and then they'll kind of twist it, and then they will, pro uh, and they, and they will, and they will do what they'll empower that information with the foul breath of their soul, saying so that by the time it goes to the fifth or sixth recipient, you find that the perception that individual will have of concerning the victim will be so bad and extremely. Uh, you know, unpleasant, which is really, really not good. And, um, you know, there's one thing that I want to say, even as we continue with uh, with this conversation. Um, one of the things that hinders us from living a fulfilled life, a fulfilling life, a life that is inclusive, is when we bring past biases and sentiments into present relationships. Mm -hmm. If you are a person who's grown who's who's grown up in a in a societal context whereby you have a bias, you're so prejudiced towards certain things or people of a particular caliber. Uh, uh, if at all you're the kind of person who's upheld sentiments which are ungodly, chances are you will uh, incorporate or import it into your present relationships, and you find that in such a case you will never be a very good relater. And this one applies to those who assassinate other people's character or even those who facilitate the spreading of uh, false allegations from um, sources that are not authentic. Mm. Because, you know, you will also find a case where you may not be the, the, the source of, uh, of, of, of assassinating people's character, but because of the fact that you have got certain biases mm -hmm. of your past mm -hmm. you've got undealt issues there's a way the devil will bring you closer to an individual who is the source mm -hmm. of false information and when that person begins to, to share something about an individual who and uh, who some, in most cases may not even be somebody you know mm -hmm. it's it will kind of ignite something in you and the next thing is that you will say all manner of things about a person you don't know and it is not very very good mm -hmm. because you know friends um if let's say for instance uh Lely regards cardinal as his enemy just because Lely has got issues with cardinal does not make me have issues with cardinal mm -hmm. whatever issues are there between Lely and cardinal I expect them to resolve them as men. Mm -hmm. It is as simple as that. But a mistake that people do is that because I love Lily so much, even when I know he's wrong, Richie is already an enemy. Mm -hmm. Yet I don't know much about Richie. I may have probably seen him on social media or, or probably, uh, I may have probably um, made an acquaintance with him. And that is as far as it goes. We are just acquaintances. We do not have a relationship. But now Lily tells me something about Richie. And I believe. You see, that's very bad. Or look at it this way. Um, I know Evans very well. We've been friends for a long time. And then Rob comes from nowhere. You know? Rob does not know, uh, does not even know Evans, but Rob comes and tells me things about Evans. And he'll talk to me about Evans as though I never knew Evans. And now, you know, in the context of church, Rob will actually tell me that he got a revelation, <laughs> that he had a dream. God said this and that about Evans and it's not good. And I believe, can you imagine I'm believing something that is not true, just because I trust Rob. Yet I purport to be Evans' friend. And then the next thing is that I start avoiding Evans, someone that I've been fr friends with for, for several decades. You see? So you find that I become a second uh, propeller of character assassination. I'm not the source, but I've gotten information which is untrue from Rob. So when Rob tells me this, it's like I get an impartation. And that impartation causes me now 
to multiply and magnify. I amplify the information about Evans in a way that it doesn't even come as per what it was originally intended. So I hate Evans even more. I don't know whether people have seen these things happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I actually have a question. The character assassinator, the one who is assassinating the other person, um, is it possible that in their own deluded mind, they believe that they are doing the right thing, like they, they have a good intention um, in what they are saying, um, in, in, and in self-promoting themselves, because character assassination actually promotes self and destroys another person. So, do they believe that it's coming from a good place? And, and it's they have good intentions in doing so, or is it outright just? Uh, pure evil, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> you see, the, the thing is this. Yeah. Um, anything that promotes self, it doesn't matter whether you have good intentions. So long as you're promoting self, your intentions are not good. Okay? The moment self checks in, And if all you want to do is to perpetuate yourself, you want to endear yourself at the expense of someone's reputation, automatically that amounts to bad intentions. Because you know, you always hear somebody saying, oh, you know, I had good intentions, I never meant evil. The truth of the matter is that the fact that you opened your mouth, you intended evil. The fact that someone has been hurt, you know, You've hurt someone, you've destroyed someone, you've caused this person to be completely alienated by society. That in and of itself, Mm -hmm. it annuls your good intentions. When you have good intentions, my friend, number one, you will never alienate other people. Okay? And even when you do not have... let, Let us assume we've made an observation. Remember, whatever you know about an individual is not the whole story. It doesn't matter how close you've been to, an, uh, to somebody. At the end of the day, it's only God who knows people. Then number two, um, even when people may probably be, 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 be going in a wrong direction, that does not mean that you destroy them because you want to occupy their position. Because if I want to promote myself, if I want to endear myself to you at the expense of Lily, what that means is that I'm, I'm trying to steal what God has given Lely that I don't have. Mm-hmm. I want to steal you, or rather, I, yes, I want to steal you from Lely. Mm-hmm. Because I've tried to access you, but I cannot get you, and I know very well the only way is to ensure that I destroy Lely's reputation. It's basically the same, same spirit that moved Cain to kill Abel. Mm-hmm. Character assassination mm-hmm. is mental and emotional murder. Mm-hmm. Okay? It is murder because you are destroying somebody's life. Mm. You're trying to, you're, you're, you're making a te- an attempt to destroy somebody's destiny. What you're basically doing, you want to ensure that if God has brought destiny helpers into the life of this individual who has actually been made for destiny, you, you basically want those destiny helpers to come to you and not that other person. And you know, we all know from God's word that, uh, <laughs> you know, God is not mocked. Yeah, whatever you sow, you shall reap. Yeah. Mm. No, uh, Bishop, this this thing has, especially um, what you were highlighting before Rob asked his question, that has really hit the nail on the head for me because I, as you were speaking, I saw it seem like a movie in my, in my head where I was realizing that for character assassination to work it's like a fisherman going to fish in a lake, in a pond or even in the sea the first thing he does is that he probes that area that he's hoping to extract something from with baits and I think because of a lot of lack of awareness if I may call it so Uh, Many people go through life with so much backlog 
when it comes to emotionally uh, we uh, heavy content that ends up being fertile ground for character assassination because i'm just thinking of you know why are elders not okay not all elders but i'm hoping uh, you know church elders some church elders why are they not uh, especially the wise ones and the seasoned ones why don't they listen and why don't they participate in forms of character assassination and i was just asking myself why are there people who seem to evade this temptation to just i mean we we all know what's happening in uh, in us and the men of god who are under attack there why why are there some people who are still silent and are not willing to say anything about these things and i think i'm starting to realize now these are people who have cleared the backlog of childhood trauma of emotional baggage of um insecurities especially personal insecurities because i think that's something we really struggle with uh, as character assassinators whether we are perpetrators accomplices or third party multipliers uh <laughs> we really struggle with insecurities and we are not aware of the impact of insecurities and because we are unaware of the impact of insecurities we end up being perpetrators accomplices or multipliers of character assassination and what you have said hey bishop i don't know if if we had it well we need to deal with these things that make us part of this cycle you know people are bitter people are bitter with their parents people are bitter with their siblings you bitter with some teacher in primary school or in high school you bitter with the professor at the university you bitter with uh, with your employer or a workmate so you find that right from childhood yeah you have become a hub of bitterness you become a hub of anger you know you become um you know a, 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 a hub of malice you've always been malicious you survive and thrive on malice Mm. you when you see people successful you think that that uh, they do not deserve that success mm. Mm. you feel like someone's success is actually supposed to be yours mm. and that's why you start scheming it's because you've never really understood the love of god mm. Mm. you think that uh, because society appears to embrace a particular individual because of his or her success and you immediately conclude that those accolades should go to you So you sit down and you strategize within yourself. Okay? And you tell yourself that your intentions are good. And you know people who assassinate other people's character. Me I think they are very sick psychologically. They are extremely sick. Okay? These are people who are paranoid. And you know a person who is extremely paranoid is an individual who is capable of killing you given the opportunity. Mm. Because you see this is one person who wants to ensure that you no longer exist that you're not in the right books of others they are there I mean I remember when I was a kid um we lived in a nested where there was this woman whose children were quite a problem so she had a lot of bitterness she had a lot of um, anger in her and she had the tendency of you know spreading stories malicious stories about other people's children yet the things that she would accuse other people's children of doing were the very things her own children were saying and i'm glad that my parents never gave her space you know there was one time she tried to come and speak to my father something about me and my dad had had stories about her oh my isa gobanga senior Mm. was so ready for him for her my dad called her out and told her to go and deal with our issues my dad just told her we know very well who you are in this estate go and deal with your issues and don't tell me things about your children and she was like oh, no you know i have just good intentions i'm a concerned parent my dad said he does not need her to be concerned my father said if my children if any of them has a problem i will deal with it but I just away 
And my dad did not bring up that conversation with me. He didn't even want to know what happened or what did not happen. Mm. Yeah. At least that's the one thing that I was so glad about my dad. But you see, her own children, who are much older than me, they did not end up well in life. So she was traumatized by the things that the children used to do. And she could not sort them out. And you know, the dad was just a deadbeat father. Could not do much about anything. You know, was, because you know, this woman, is, she, 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 she was a very choleric wife and mother. So as a result, the children became rebellious. And she began to assume that every one of us is not good. I experienced that as a kid when I was growing up, you know. So a person who assassinates the character of an individual is sick. This person needs therapy. Okay. And the only therapy this person needs is Jesus, mm. you know. Unfortunately, there are those in church who say they have met Jesus, but unfortunately they... <laughs> They still go about perpetuating a lot of hurt and and damage on people, and 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 you know, <laughs> such people. This is how I look at them. They lack social intelligence. Mm. Okay, <laughs> they lack social intelligence. That's the truth of the matter. Because you see, why would you draw conclusions about mm. an individual based on either what other people have said? or based on what your wrong perceptions have told you. Mm -hmm. It means you've got no uh, social intelligence. You want to fit into a particular circle, but you feel that this particular individual is thriving. So you want to destroy this person in order to uh, put yourself in that social circle. And yet you've got no social skills. Your interpersonal skills are off. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if I've seen such people. They'll destroy your reputation and once and once that cycle does away with you, when they come in, yeah. they can't fit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just the same way you find that now, you know, you people you're married, you find that, um, um, let's say, a very close friend of yours tells your wife something about you so that now when your wife decides to leave you, she tries to come in. And in trying to come in to fit, she cannot feed. If anything, things become worse. Mm -hmm. We've seen that such things happen. Because, because, I mean, the thing is this. If your friend is thriving in his or her marriage, why would you want to destroy that marriage in order to fit in? Hmm? You are an, I mean, I mean, you are an equally yoked in that union. Yes. You don't belong. Hmm? Mm -hmm. You do not have the aura to hang around that man or that woman you're targeting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because you can't, and, and, and you know, it's funny. Sometimes people who assassinate the character of others, they are not even your enemies. They're very close friends. Mm -hmm. You know, people whom you've schooled with, people whom you grew up together with, someone who's been within your own circles. I've had stories, like there's a time in, 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 in a church where um, I, I first grew up, I had instances whereby, um, and unfortunately, these ones were always ladies, they were the culprits. Um, one of the ladies in this church had a best friend. So she, she decided to introduce her best friend to her then fiancé. And she thought that she could trust her best friend with that information. Unknown to her, her best friend went behind her back and turned the tables. And by the time when this lady discovered, her fiancé had actually lost interest in her. And apparently her best friend married this man, fiancé. The fiancé breaks the engagement and gets married to this person. Like there's a case of a lady, I remember I was having a conversation with my sister. Up to now, this other lady has never married any, any man because of what her closest friend did. She took over somebody else's man, got married to that man, and is living the, the, the life of her time. So this lady, she's at a point where she's so traumatized that she doesn't trust men. And she's not even anywhere close to dating anybody. And it's been years. 
Sasa yule sema chakula cha kingoni mwako. Yeah. Sometimes your enemy is not someone who is out there. Your enemy is somebody who is very close. I mean even as pastors haven't you been in, in, in situations where um, you have friends you rather have a friend and you hold this friend in high esteem the friend comes to your congregation and he has himself or a friend or herself to your congregants and within a short time almost three quarters of the church has turned against you hmm. <laughs> And then and, and you know I, and you know I usually ask myself how can you as a congregant trust someone who's introduced to you by your pastor? <laughs> you know act like you know this person better than your pastor knows. Yeah. And you know the thing that we must uh, be ready to guard ourselves against is this. If you trust the information that somebody tells you about another so much, you're going to be the next victim. Mm. That's true. Yeah. Mm. And it's the same same person who will do it. If not anybody else, most like most chances are it will be the same person. Because you know it is it, what you've basically done you saw a very bad scene. Yeah. It's true. Mm-hmm. I've seen pastors who go through that. Mm-hmm. You want to you, you want to start a ministry out of the in, in the ministry of somebody else. And it works against you. It is diabolic venomous mm-hmm. you destroy somebody's marriage what happens is your own life will be destroyed by the devil you destroy someone's reputation at the workplace so that an individual is fired your time of firing will come and it will be quite messy it will be a public spectacle it might even make to the social media and the headlines and uh, everybody will wonder I think even Satan from hell will even wonder what exactly has happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's talk. I think it's true to say um, if you uh, plant a seed of uh, uh, discord, it will follow you. Because uh, I think one of the elements of character assassination, you, know, you are trying to in a lot of times you're trying to break a relationship so that you can still be a relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to break the friendship between the chain events so that I can still that relationship. Mm-hmm. And because I don't know the value of relationships, if I knew the value of relationships, I wouldn't try to break this relationship. Mm-hmm. And because I do not know that value, the same way I try to break this one is the same way. Either I will, again, because I do not know the value of the relationship, I'll ha- try to have that relationship with events that I've stolen in the name mm-hmm. of now. It's my uh, friendship now. But because I never knew the importance of a relationship or a friendship, eventually I will, I will at one point, and uh, Dakosan and events mm-hmm. because I, I don't know what is the value of a friendship. Mm-hmm. I don't know what is the value of a relationship. So even when your character assassinates somebody with uh, an intention or because a lot of times you are trying to endear somebody else to us uh, with the hope that they will be our person. Eventually, it will not, it, no matter how long it, it takes, it will not It will not last. I mean, um, there have been examples like, uh, you know, people live in church and, you know, they congregate to, the people who are living, they congregate together to assassinate the character of the pastor. Mm. Then eventually, because they never realize the value of the relationship with the pastor, and they don't know the value of a relationship. Between them themselves, the relationships get broken. The friendship get broken because between them, within themselves, they don't have a value for, for relationships at all. Mm. So um, I think it's something people ought to consider before I go and assassinate this this person or before I plant this seed. What is what value for relationships do I have even within myself? What uh, where am I hurting when it comes to 
or where am I lacking when it comes to building genuine relationships with people? Mm. Because you do not necessarily build a relationship with the person because they did this for you or did that for you. You build a relationship based on the revelation you have of that person, the knowledge, intimate knowledge you have of that person. So at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, um, when it comes to relationship, what is my uh, value system around relationships, if I may say. If that is lacking, you will always go assassinating people's characters. Is this the same spirit that Cain had? Mm. He became a wanderer. By destroying Abel, what happened is the ground was cast. And you know, Cain's source of livelihood was from the ground because he was uh, he, he was a man who practiced uh, uh, plant husbandry. So when he destroyed Abel, mm. what what happened is that uh, he was he was told that whatever he plants. The ground will not produce for him. So he lost his career. He lost his purpose. And he became a wanderer. Mm-hmm. And if you look at those who thrive in character assassination, they are always wandering from one relationship to another. Mm-hmm. You see? You'll find that even... And you know, it's so fun. Even for those who get married, mm-hmm. you've stolen somebody's uh, boyfriend or girlfriend. You get married to them. Yeah, and then you end up getting married. You'll still not be very contented in that marriage. Because, because you'll always be thinking that your spouse is cheating on you. You see your spouse hugging a member of the opposite sex. The next thing is your insecurities will rise up and you'll start now policing your spouse, going through the, 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 phone, the, the, the phone to check the call logs and the text messages. Wow, that's a very miserable life. I don't even think I'd like to live that life. You go checking. You want to know. You live and put people to be policing your husband or your wife, okay? Mm-hmm. You want to know, uh, maybe at the office you've got a, you, you've been able to establish uh, an acquaintance there, and each and every evening, your wife's work colleague gives you an update of the number of uh, of, 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 <laughs> of people who've spoken to you. And if it's any person of the opposite sex, you want to know whether there were hugs that were given, and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. You can imagine that kind of a life. Because you do not have social intelligence. You do not even, like what Lily is saying, you don't know the value of relationship. Because, you see, relationship is not control. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And you, and funny enough, now you'll end up now saying that this person has an affair with my husband. This person has an affair with my wife. Mm. Mm. So you live, you th- it's like your, your life revolves around your insecurities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very true. Actually, in addition to that, I've realized most people who assassinate the, the character of other people, it's because they haven't yet understood the price that it took for that person to be where they are. So it could be within the sphere of relationship and marriage, like you said. Um, every, every person who is married has actually paid a price. The price may not necessarily be in terms of resources or finances. It could be emotional. It could be in terms of compromising on certain preferences that they have so that their spouse can be comfortable. If it's in terms of career, there's a certain price that someone has paid. You know, they've taken years to establish themselves or rather God has really taken a lot of time, a long duration of time to cause them to be established in their careers. And even in just every sphere, even ministry, um, it takes years for someone to mature into the stature of the minister that God has called them into. So when you see someone assassinating the character of, of another person, it's because they are yet to actually understand the price that that person has paid. And to them, they are trying to find a shortcut to attain to the stature of the person that they are actually trying to assassinate. Yeah, shortcut. You, want, you, you, you don't want to go through the process. Mm-hmm. You want to get the shortcut. You wait for someone to get a potential marital spouse and then you begin to fish that person using treachery. Mm. Yeah. There are things people have to answer to God. Mm. Mm. When the time of reckoning comes. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think it even happens in in the corporate world because 
I, I worked in a corporate for a very short time, but I was able to notice such kinds of things, such that um, Evans and I could be friends, and we are we're even talking and laughing while going to a meeting. But inside that <laughs> meeting, I backstab Evans so that I may protect myself in front of our bosses, so that um, when the time for promotion comes, I'm the one who is favored. Uh, that happens a lot in the in the in the marketplace as well, and you will find uh, the the relationship that somebody may have with you is pretentious. It's not all the time, but there are c- scenarios where where you can befriend a character assassinator, and uh, they pretend to be your friend, your companion. Um, but when when the rubber meets the road, they when they know notice that uh, they are the ones who want to be favored for the promotion, they can do anything. And if, if that includes you being fired or you becoming a casualty um, in front of the bosses, that ends up happening. And so. That that thing is really serious. It's really serious, and you'll find that the person once they are promoted, they can't even do the job. Uh, they can't attain to the standards that are expected of them, and that's usually what happens. Um, I think the reality is the reality of do unto others what you would have them do unto you. I feel like it is a system. It's not just a, it's not just a desire, but it's a system such that whatever you do, it, it, it's, it's as though you, that seed that you've planted will is looking and searching for you. So if it's a seed of evil, that seed will grow and look for you and search for you until it finds you. And sometimes it takes months, years, but it will find you. And the day it does, um, it will be a day of record. So, yeah, that's that's one thing I also noticed. And you know, the sad bit about people who assassinate uh, others' character is that um, for them to be able to thrive in that success, mm-hmm. they have to use treachery. Yeah. They have to assassinate several more people. So they have to work extra hard because they have no grace. Mm-hmm. Okay? They have to paint everybody as negative except themselves because they are so deluded in the notion that unless they do that, they cannot thrive. You see? But like I said, a time of reckoning comes. Because, you know, even in the case of, if, 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 in the, case of the marketplace, the reason why you don't have the capacity to be able to deliver is because you have a very foul spirit. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere around you, the aura around you Mm -hmm. is defiled. Mm -hmm. If it is uh, maybe in a position of marketing, nobody, I mean, mean, no potential clients will want to deal with you. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to deal with you. And you know, even when it comes to marriage, you get married to somebody and that person comes to terms with the fact that he or she made the wrong decision and you start suffering in that marriage. So now you have to find a way. You have to come up with a story. You'll even begin to say that your spouse's relatives are the problem. So you'll come up with a story because that is the only way you'll be able to draw at the attention of your husband. Because aside from probably... Uh, exhibiting negative energy and, and and spreading malicious rumor. There is nothing else you can discuss with your husband. There is nothing else you can discuss with your wife. Mm-hmm. The only thing that brings you people together to a conversation is is assassinating other people's character. <laughs> That's the only thing. You cannot talk about business prospects. You cannot talk about uh, you know uh, other 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 forms of personal development. The only thing you do is you talk about people. Mm. with the intention of putting them down. Mm. You start now isolating, you know, your spouse from her friends. 
Mm-hmm. After you've gotten hold of her, after you've gotten hold of him, you'll start now isolating your spouse from the friends. And you'll cook up stories about the friends that I had from so and so that this guy that you call your friend is not good. And yet what you had were, were, were things that were coming from your own mind. Things that you cooked from your solid called nature. Because you're full of defilement, you're bitter, you're envious, you're jealous. You, you know, you are a child of perdition, you know. It's like you, you'll always be against everybody whom you real or imagined enemy that you think is a threat to your own interests. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, um, what you're describing, Bishop, it's 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 witchcraft because uh, you, <laughs> you know having come from a very uh, dominant uh, uh, community that is recognized for witchcraft, uh, although I, I believe that there are other communities <laughs> <laughs> that have stronger witchcraft than mm-hmm. ours. <laughs> the the very basic thought to motivate someone to consult a witch is it is not sufficient for me to succeed. I must tear you down and have you lose. Even if I remain poor, you will be poorer than me. That's just the the basic thought of witchcraft. I'm not interested in my success. I'm interested in your failure. <laughs> and that's now what motivates someone to develop malice a forethought, as the lawyers usually call it and generate such hatred concerning a person. And as I'm listening to this, I it's it's unfortunate how iterations of the same have found expression in our lives within um, the modern community. And despite our technological advancements, we are still operating in this in this way of thinking. And I have just been thinking to myself surely why 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 can we not snap out of this bondage i mean it's like i want to now think more deeply on the matter of salvation because it seems that the the greatest forms of witchcraft happen even in churches <laughs> where people assassinate each other's characters mm-hmm for their own profit. And the body of Christ should never be that. Okay, by the way, come to think of it, even mosques have such, uh, and, and, and temples have such politics. But that notwithstanding, I'm thinking a church should should have snapped out of this, but it has made me think a lot, Bishop. Why? It has made me think a lot. You see, you may call yourself a believer, but you're not a convert. <laughs> Yeah, just because you purport to be born again does not mean that you've been converted. Yeah. In other words, you've you've not come to the place where you look at people, you're able to see people the way Jesus Christ looks at them. Yeah. You see? Because the Bible speaks of us not knowing each other after the man of the flesh. Yeah. That anyone whom the Lord has accepted, you must accept that person. Regardless of whether you, you 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 have all the information about their history, hmm? because if we are going to keep on uh, riding on what people did thirty years ago and use it to fight them because of the fact that we want to occupy a po- a privileged position that they have, then we'll never move anywhere. Hmm. You see, and that's why I told you that uh, people who assassinate others character they suffer from uh, from from a, a lack of social intelligence these are people who are mentally sick these are people who are emotionally sick because they have issues which they have never been able to deal with they struggle with insecurities they struggle from a sense of uh, uh, inability to uh, to be to being able to perceive their own pristine identity, so they don't have uh, uh, the, the the capacity to place value 
from things that are more valuable. They look at what other people have. They do not have any uh, personal sense of value. And as a result, they'll do everything they can to destroy other people. They'll destroy your life. They'll destroy your marriage, your career, and every, every other thing. But at the end of the day, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You know how thieves' days are numbered? Mm. Yeah. yeah. At these days are numbered. Mm. And I've seen this. I mean, you know, when I got born again, I thought people in church were saints. <laughs> okay, we call them saints. But I, you know, <laughs> I thought that people are saints. I expected things in church to be different as, as a young believer. I got so surprised that even within the eldership, people are scheming. <laughs> you know, they are trying to strategize on how to out, outdo each other in order to please the senior pastor. Mm. You find that even at a, at a departmental level, that is what would actually happen. An individual who is full of envy would, you know, would put you down. And um, I used to find it challenging, especially uh, relating with, some, with, 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 with most of the senior ladies in the women's fellowship. You find that some of them did not have sons and daughters who were born again. But they would be the ones trying to put you down, trying to correct you, rebuke you, embarrass you, say how unsaved you are, and yet their own children are not saved. You see, it it, it, it was very common, especially in, in, in the women's level, until one time when the senior pastor had to call out to the women, blasted them during a Sunday service. And you know, the youths were cheering because the mamas are too much. You know, mm. they were too much. You know, someone wants to tell you ABCD about how saved they were, and yet, if you check their background, they weren't even saved when they were your age. They, you know, when, you, when you're saved by the grace of God, years after you've gotten married, I mean, uh, and I say this respectfully, what moral authority do you have to advise someone who wants to walk in the Lord, wants to walk in holiness into marriage, Yet you got married before even you knew Jesus. To yeah. mm. so the point that you even want to criticize someone's choice of a partner just because you hate that person, just because you've differed with that person's mother. Yeah. Mm. I, there was a case one time, this was so sad, in the same same church, whereby um, there, were two, there, there were these two women, they had their differences, and unfortunately, even when the elders tried to bring them together, they could not resolve their differences. So what happened is that um, one of them um, has a daughter. So the daughter got into a relationship with uh, a gentleman. And they were planning to get married. So now the mother of uh, this daughter what happened is that uh, she was happy about it mm. and she talked about it. So now her so-called nemesis, unfortunately, you know, we, we are talking about having a nemesis in church. Her so-called nemesis heard about it. So what she did, she made sure she got to know the mother of this boy and told the mother of this boy things about this girl mm. that were not true. And Mark you, this is a girl that she barely knows. She doesn't even talk to this girl. But she tells the mother things about the girl, that the girl has carried out several abortions, done this and that, there's no stability, you know. And uh, so the mother of the boy called the son and told the son everything, and, and, and she tried her best to discourage the son from getting married to this girl. But you know, the son was very... Adamant. The son was very adamant. So this woman confronted this lady and told this lady, why do you want to mess up with my son? You think we don't know? You carried out abortions and so on and so forth. And she said it in anger. Things became thick until a meeting was called. And uh, eventually now the truth was now, you know, you know, fished out. And it, it was discovered that it's, 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 it's the, this woman, this this woman who was friends with her friend, she's the one who came up with those stories. So she was actually called out and told that you either confirm or to deny. And Mark you, 
the mother to the girl threatened that she was going to file a lawsuit. So the senior pastor had to say, okay, let's, let's not go into that. The lady was suspended. The woman, that mama, she was suspended from church. And uh, she never came back. And that was the end of the story. Yeah. So anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think these people, they are in so much uh, thought, they are not able to talk. I don't know whether they are they have been culprits or not. I'm not so sure. Or maybe they have been at the impact of uh, this conversation. So I think we'll just uh, end uh, this particular session. We'll continue with uh, part two of this conversation next time. May God bless you.